the basic programming commands. To get started, after you turn on the robot, it will be brought to the robot operation page. The robot status is off. Turns on, robot status turns on. The LED right around the tool flange turns on, and you're ready to go. To move to the programming page, you're going to click on the programming tab. Once at the programming page, you'll be able to select the file that you want to work on down here on the file tab. Click on that, we'll click on new file. It'll ask you to type in the file name. I'm just going to use a random file name, demo. One. Accept that, save that. It'll ask you what folder you want to save it in. This is the Hanwha TechWin storage file. This is the standard file the controller comes with, so that's where I'm going to save my file. This area here is your flowchart. This is where we select the different commands, add them to your flowchart to control the robot. The first box in the flowchart is the initialize command. This is where you can view the program start time, run time, repeat count, and running time. This is just to give you an overview of how many cycles of the program uh, that the robot has run through. Um, I'm not going to use that, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click the skip button. It's already selected here, so it's selected for skip, so it won't even pass over this box while running the program. You can see that the first command here is the move command. I'm going to go ahead and select the move button and you have the option of joint, linear, arc, and circle. Linear will move the tool center point in a linear direction and it will keep the tool center point from turning while the robot moves around. The joint option minimizes the joint movement of the robot and will bring the tool center point from point A to point B as quickly as possible while minimizing the joint rotation and the wear on the robot. The arc option makes you select two points for the one movement and that'll bring the tool center point and an arc around the two points that you've selected. That'll be to avoid different obstacles in the robot's path. The circle option moves the robot in a circle from point one through point two and around back to point one. And that's for different tools you'll have attached to the robot. You can use it for stirring or any kind of specialized action that you have the robot to do in a circle movement. For now I'm just going to use a joint because this minimizes the robot wear and that will be the easiest for us to set up. To set the point that you're about to move to you go ahead and you click on the set point box. This will bring you to the manual move screen. You can see the robot here in the 3D preview box. You can move the robot wherever you want to go. And now we'll just move the robot to the left. That's good enough. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and select the move button again to move the robot to the second point. We're going to set that point. And we'll move it to the right. And okay. As you see under the flowchart, down the bottom left corner, the play button, the step button, the stop button are all deselected. You cannot click on them. That is because the robot program has not been applied yet. So once you apply the program, hit OK. You'll now see that the play and the step button have been highlighted, so now that they're selectable. I'll go back to the beginning of the program. I'll hit the play button and it'll play through the entire program with all of the two steps that we have. So it'll go back to point one, and point two, and then it'll stop. To repeat the program, you go down next to the play button, to the left of the play button, you'll see a rectangle made up of arrows. You select that, now it's highlighted. Now the program will repeat for as long as you want it until you press the stop button. Let's go ahead and press play, and the robot will continue to move left and right. Repeat the program for as long as we want it to until we tell it to stop. We'll go ahead and tell it to stop so we can move on. The next command that we're going to talk about will be the if command. The if command is used to initiate different commands depending on the condition of the robot. To start an if command, an if statement will come up here to the text box and initiate the if formula. This is where you can input the if statement for your inputs, outputs, and variables. To use a use else statement, you can click on the checkbox and that will drop down an else statement below the if statement right here on your two subprograms to the if command. And you can use that to set up inputs and outputs 
for the robot, it can decide which direction it wants to go, with how to go about its next movement based on what condition the robot's in when you bring it to that if else statement. I'm going to delete it because I don't have any inputs or outputs to provide a good example for that. But we're going to move on to the loop command. The loop command is used to repeatedly execute a series of commands under the loop statement. If we select the loop box and we drop down that loop subprogram under the little loop box, we can submit other commands under there. So we can loop this movement or any kind of other command that we select under here as many times as we want. So we'll select a movement command, change it to the circle option, uh, set the first point a little bit to the right, and then I'll set the second point a little bit to the left. And then I'll tell it to loop that command five times. All right. Now I have to apply the program again now that we have changed some stuff. So I'll apply the program. Hit OK. Go down here and press the play box. In this 3D preview screen, you can see how the robot will react. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the program, select play. And go to the left, to the right, and then we'll go in a circle five times. And because we have the replay box selected, it'll repeat the program again, and it'll go in a circle five more times, and it'll do that forever until we tell it to stop. The next command we will discuss will be the switch command. The switch command and the if command are pretty similar. However, the if command takes a little bit longer because the if command is executed after assessing all the conditions branching to else if. But a switch command is executed immediately by finding the corresponding case. Therefore, it is much faster than executing an if command. So you can use that to switch between different commands in different cases much faster than an if command because if command it has to see the inputs and outputs and verify itself but again I don't have any inputs or outputs or conditions to show you how to use the switch command so we're gonna go ahead and delete that next command that we have here is the wait command sometimes in a program or on a line where we're using the robot it'll just have to wait for a few seconds or a minute or however long it needs to wait until the next action is required it can wait for a specific time it can wait for a digital input or output, or it could wait for an analog input or output, or you can even input an expression for it to wait for if you know what specific formula you want to use for that expression. So I'll just use the time, it'll be very simple, uh, but wait for two seconds when it gets to that box on the program. The next command we can talk about here is the set command. The set command you can use to set a digital input or output, analog input or output, a variable or a tool center point change. So you can change between any of the tool center points that you have created on the tool center point page. That's very useful if you have to switch between different tools in a program. I'll just use it to set the vacuum output with the tool that we have on the robot. Select it for high so that the vacuum will turn on when we get to that point. And the last command I want to talk to you about in this video is going to be the subprogram command. The first thing you need to do before you select the subprogram command is create a subprogram. Once you select it, it'll generate its own subprogram name right here. You can load a file or a template. This demo file that I've created beforehand. This box that appears right here, it says the initial icon of the loaded program is deleted. Do you want to load the program? And that'll be okay. That's that initialized box that I was talking about. Um, since it's, there's already an initialized box at the beginning of this um, the program that we're working with, it cannot create another one. So that's okay. Go and click yes. It'll load that for us. Then I'm going to go back to the main program. Select the box prior to the next box in the flowchart. Select the subprogram. So I've loaded that one. Now we can select the demo. Select that. And now it has a whole program already associated within that subprogram that I've already created. 
After we've applied the subprogram, I'm going to select another set, digital vacuum output, select it to low. This first one is set on high, so that'll turn on the vacuum. This one is set to low, so it'll turn off the vacuum. I'll shorten the circle times just two. Go to the beginning of the program. I have to apply the program to the robot before we can start it. Hit OK. I press play. Then it go through the movements to the left, to the right. It'll circle two times because it is told to loop through that movement twice. It'll wait two seconds. We told it to wait two seconds. The vacuum turned on. The sub program plays through the three points that I've selected. And then the vacuum turned off. All right. Just a few other points I want to cover before we end this video. Down here at the bottom, next to the play, step, and stop button, we have the speed. You can set the overall speed that you want the program to play at. So we set it at 50%. The program will play at half the speed that it was before. Then it'll go much slower. And then we can set it again to even slower. And even slower. Just barely at 1%. The world will just barely move in a circle very slowly. Then we can speed it up again to 100%. And it'll continue the program. Also, in the 3D preview box, you have the real robot and the simulation option. You can select on the simulation option so that this program only plays on the 3D preview box, only on the pendant. Will this program play. It will not move the real robot, so I'll show you by applying the program. Since we've changed some settings, you have to apply the program again. I will press play. And the program only plays in this 3D preview box. The real robot is not moving. This code we got right here, this function is not supported in the simulation mode. Please check the mode. Hit OK. That says that because the set option, I have this set option here for a set vacuum high, the pendant cannot turn the I.O. on in simulation mode because it will actually turn the real I.O. on and it will turn the real vacuum of the robot on. And since we have it on simulation, we don't want that. So that error code is okay, so we'll just have it continue playing through. And we can step on through the program using only the 3D preview box in simulation. So we can test some robot movements before we actually put it into use. So we'll put the robot back from simulation to the real robot. And then if you want to adjust any of these movements, you can. You can select the first movement, move the robot back to that point. You can set that point again, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Click OK. And then that point's been adjusted and it won't affect the program. And that's some basic programming for you guys. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. I hope that I have answered some of the questions that you may have had. And please watch your other videos in this series to get a more complete understanding of the HCR5. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.